This is the image of Bangladesh, the world's mainstream media. Is this a country that you would travel to? What if this was the image of Bangladesh? <laughs> is this a country you would travel to? These negative images are what we have to fight against if we're going to drive investment, tourism, and a fascination for Bangladesh. What if we could use images to inspire curiosity, to create jobs, to empower the lowest rungs on our economic ladder through sustainable tourism? What if we could inspire a new narrative of Bangladesh. Before I came to Bangladesh, I'd been traveling for a number of years already. I'd seen Angkor, I'd climbed the Great Wall, I've ticked the right boxes, and I followed the Lonely Planet's trail. Not only this, I was getting paid to do this as a tour guide. I was one lucky dog, right? But then something happened. I met someone very special. And she told me she was coming to Bangladesh to work as a volunteer. I'm ashamed to admit this, but my first question was, where on earth is Bangladesh? <laughs> it's been my experience that when me most people first hear of Bangladesh, their reaction is just like mine. If they have heard of it, it's probably just the bad stuff. Stuff like this. Bangladesh cyclone death toll hits 15,000. Dozens dead after ferry capsizes in Bangladesh. Now, here's a little experiment. We type Bangladesh into Google Images. Let's see what we get. A lot of maps of Bangladesh. Ah, what a flood. Uh, poverty. Tea, not bad. Oh, my favorite, Bangladesh politics. <laughs> now remember the negative images I showed you at the beginning? I called these negative images poverty porn. They're perpetuating a negative image of this country. They pull on the world's heartstrings to create guilt to get donations. Although these images benefit one sector of Bangladesh, the impact on the rest of the country is profound. Now, I believe that the aid sector has done tons of great work for Bangladesh. Health and education are the critical infrastructure needed to grow a country. But this image of Bangladesh only shows one side of the story. I came to Bangladesh because I wanted to do something about poverty. I saw a country that looked ugly on the surface, and I wanted to be the change. So in 2006, I came as an IT volunteer, and I worked as a support specialist in the office, the duck office of an international NGO. And it was only when I finally got here that I started to see the real beauty of Bangladesh. The man on the left is Habu. Habu was a rickshaw wala. He stayed outside of one of Dhaka's expatriate clubs, waiting for passengers. For a person with very little formal education, Habu was street smart. He taught himself English, and he knew Dhaka really well. Not only was he a strong rickshaw puller, he was crafty. He knew every single shortcut and how to avoid all the traffic police in Gulshan. <laughs> Stuff that other rickshaw pullers hadn't even dreamt of. One of the first things I learned from ba about Bangladesh from Habu is that Bangladeshi people are extremely hospitable. Yeah. <laughs> and that is worth applauding, definitely. Once we became friends, he repeatedly invited me to visit his home and to meet his family. At first, though, I was a little non-committal. 
even a bit uncomfortable. Did I want to see Habu's life up close? Did I want to be connected to his reality? Wouldn't that make me uncomfortable? Well, Habu also taught me something else about Bangladeshi people. They are patient and persistent. <laughs> One day I said yes, and we are, off we went to Gajipur. And at his home, I discovered a humble but immaculately clean single room. Habu had a wife and two young children. His room was in a small compound shared with several other families. Now, I've driven a rickshaw before. I kind of like driving rickshaws, actually. Although it's hard physical work, especially in the hot weather. Rickshaws are inefficient, heavy contraptions, and the brakes are terrible. But today, on that day I went to Habu's house, none of that mattered. Habu and his wife had prepared a gigantic feast for me. There was fragrant pulao, giant bowls of shobji, several heaping bowls of murgi, murgi, chicken. There was no way we could finish all the food he prepared, and moreover, it was absolutely delicious in the way that only a home-cooked meal can be. I'm sure this gesture represented a few days' work for Habu. I left with a full belly, but more importantly, I realized that my poverty porn stereotype was wrong. This was a lesson I learned over and over and over again in Bangladesh. I learned that people in poverty don't measure wealth in material terms. They measure it in terms of generosity and kindness. Richness of culture. In Bangladesh, hospitality means how much can I give a foreign guest, not how much can I get. This realization stunned me and changed my life. Back home, it seemed that my identity was being driven by how much I owned, what kind of shoes I had, or what kind of car I drove. I walk around in my city, and I barely even look at other people. If we talk to strangers, it's seen as confronting. This way of life isn't sustainable. It's consuming the finite resources of this planet that we share. It's creating isolation within our communities. And finally, it's cluttering our lives with stuff that actually just doesn't matter. People like Habu were teaching me what was really important in life. And this lesson was so powerful for me that after my volunteering, I decided to stay and write a whole new travel guide for Bangladesh. I experienced the beauty of Bangladesh's monsoon, when the landscape is capped with stunning cumulus clouds and painted with pastel colors. I went to the few precious wild natural places left in this country, including the Shondarbans, the world's largest mangrove forest and home to the precious Royal Bengal tiger. I learned how Buddhism's ancient roots are buried under the land, and there remains so much more to be discovered in this country under the shifting sediments of the Ganges, which is the world's largest river delta. Finally, I was utterly flabbergasted by the strength and resilience I saw in you, the Bangladeshi people. I learned how on the shifting river islands of the Jamuna Basin, thousands of people live and die by their creativity and their willingness to survive. I also discovered how climate change was potentially making this problem much worse. Everywhere I went, I saw creativity and resilience, pride 
and culture. I experienced human connection through the incredible hospitality of Bangladeshi people. I saw how little people actually needed in order to live and, dare I say, be happy. Each day, people like these were inspiring me to look at my life differently. I really struggled with this question that just because I grew up in Canada, I got access to the healthcare and the education I needed to make my way in the world. But because people lacked these opportunities here, I saw so much potential unfulfilled. Ultimately, I was inspired enough to ask myself, what can I give back to the people of Bangladesh? And that's why I've decided to create the Positive Light Project. Using a website, I asked photographers of Bangladesh to send us photos that I could use to promote the beauty of this country to the world. Many of the photographs I've shown you today are from this project. I used crowdfunding to help me raise the money I needed so I could put my professional creativity into this project. 130 photographers contributed over 700 images. All of the photographs are licensed for Creative Commons use. That means that anyone, anywhere, can use these images to promote Bangladesh online as long as you credit the original photographer. Well-managed, sustainable tourism can be a positive economic force to be reckoned with. It can create jobs, promote cultural exchange, and protect nature. Bangladesh is the perfect place to promote this kind of tourism. And to create it, we need to share a new positive story of Bangladesh. A story of dignity, not despair. Potential, not pity. How much potential, you might ask? In 2012, tourism in India represented an estimated 10% of its GDP. In Bangladesh, this number was 4%. That was 2011, sorry. That means if we were on par with India, we could create six billion more dollars in tourism income. Far more than any aid and development project combined. Bangladeshi people, people like Habu, deserve this opportunity to participate in the world's tourism market. By promoting a positive image of Bangladeshi people, we would create value in the minds of our potential visitors and pride in our own hearts. Finally, I want to end with this. Many of you might still take your holidays outside of Bangladesh. And the rest of the world probably isn't going to change how it travels tomorrow. What I'm asking you today is to discover the everyday people in the places that you travel. By supporting, by supporting small-scale tourism initiatives, those who need your tourism dollars will benefit the most. It's definitely not the easiest option, but Bangladesh taught me that this was a way more meaningful method of travel, a way of travel. Now indulge me for a moment. Say that you did choose to take your next trip in Bangladesh. Yes, you'd be, you'd be creating jobs and contributing to the economy. But more importantly, you'd be connecting with the humanity within Bangladeshi people. Every, everything we need for sustainable, small-scale, high-value tourism in Bangladesh is already here. You just need to be adventurous and a little open-minded. Traveling in Bangladesh was a gift to my life. It can be yours, too. So I implore you, please treat yourself by traveling here and, and sharing your incredible journeys with others. Because if you did this, I can guarantee 
that you will feel more connected to the things that matter in life. Thank you.